For the first time in 19 months, Bitcoin's price fell below the $20,000 mark, leading to a lot of doubt, fear, and unanswered questions among investors. Why are the prices plummeting? Has the Bitcoin bubble burst? Will Bitcoin survive? Well, let's try to unpack some recent events related to the crash and also find out what influential people in the space are saying. All right, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, why is Bitcoin crashing? Well, it's important to note that this isn't Bitcoin's first ever crash. In fact, it has crashed multiple times from 2011 to date. And the first crash tied to the Mt. Gox hacking incident that happened in 2011. So Mt. Gox was the largest crypto exchange at the time where the majority of Bitcoin was held and traded. The hack caused Bitcoin's price to fall by over 99% in just one day. And the second crash happened two years later when Bitcoin reached the then all-time high at around $1,151 in early December. The cause this time was the Chinese government's decision to ban banks and other financial institutions from trading and storing Bitcoin. In 2017, another crash commonly referred to as the crypto winter happened. Before crashing, Bitcoin had gone on an impressive rally that saw its price increase tenfold. However, this was short-lived. Just after hitting its all-time high, then at $19,497, it experienced a 29% drop and traded at around $13,000 only six days later. But unfortunately, it kept getting worse and 12 months later, Bitcoin was trading at around $3,000, recording an 83% drop over the same period. Now, the 2020 crash happened due to COVID, which affected virtually every sector. During the early days of the pandemic, Bitcoin experienced a 37% drop in value on the same day. But just a year later, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were flying. Bitcoin went on to hit its new all-time high in November 2021 at around $69,000. So this was eight months ago. Bitcoin is currently trading at around $20,000, a 71% drop from its all-time high last year. So then what caused the 2022 crash? Well, it all started with the Terra Luna fiasco. Terra's crash not only affected Terra's investors, but the whole crypto ecosystem. Terra or USC is a stablecoin that had a market capitalization of over 18 million before the crash. USC, however, is an algorithmic stablecoin. Basically, it's not backed one to one by US dollars like USDT or USD. Instead, it relies on a two token seniorage model that involves Luna. Now, we're not going to deep dive into the nitty gritty details here. All you need to know is that eventually, USC lost its dollar peg while Luna was also crashing, leading to the price of Luna spiraling to almost zero. This wiped over 40 billion out of the crypto market. Additionally, Luna's foundation had to sell off over 50,000 Bitcoins in an attempt to save UST's peg, which exerted a direct downward pressure on the price of Bitcoin. So this happened back in May and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies haven't recovered ever since. That said, Luna's crash was just one of the catalysts since Bitcoin's price was already steadily falling since the beginning of the year. Many experts hold global inflation, rising interest rates, the Ukraine-Russia war and recession fears to be some of the prime architects responsible for this bear market. A major falling price came after the release of May's inflation report and in a bid to cool down inflation, the US Federal Reserve decided to increase the interest rate. In just a couple of days, Bitcoin's price dropped by around 32%. Experts and crypto skeptics had a lot to say about this. So in an interview with Next Advisor, Anthony Pompiano, a crypto expert and co-founder of Morgan Creek Digital Assets, emphasized how crypto is not immune to macroeconomic factors. Anthony said, it is important to understand that Bitcoin's current drawdown in price is largely driven by changes in the macroeconomy. 
Increases in interest rates, coupled with quantitative tightening, have driven correlations across assets towards one, and we are seeing asset price sell-offs across the financial market. He advises investors to control their emotions and to make decisions based on value and not price. Other experts like Martin Heesbook, head of blockchain and crypto research at Uphold, agrees with Anthony as he strongly believes that the market is still very vulnerable, primarily due to the difficult economic situation that we are facing right now. Now, that said, there are skeptics who don't believe in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. Matt Solar of the American Economic Liberties Project recently tweeted, I have no idea if Bitcoin or Ethereum will go to zero. I hope they do and soon. But my guess is that crypto will never become wholly worthless, but it will eventually become irrelevant, like the beanie baby frenzy of the 1990s. Whatever the sentiment though, many experts believe that with no end in sight, the war, inflation, and shifting monetary policy in the US will likely continue to drive more volatility in the coming weeks and months. It's not only crypto investors and skeptics who are closely watching the digital asset markets, Regulators have had crypto in their crosshairs for the longest time, and the recent events have fueled calls for regulation. Cryptocurrencies have been positioning themselves as an alternative to fiat, but now more than ever, it will be difficult to dispute the regulation claims considering crypto lost over $2 trillion in value between now and November last year. While stablecoins were always likely to be the first victims of regulation, the Terra fiasco may accelerate regulatory action. After the Terra collapse, US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called for a comprehensive framework governing stablecoins and urged Congress to act. The SEC was even reported to be investigating the marketing of TerraUSD by Terraform Labs. Plus, recently, prosecutors in Korea blocked Terra developers Daniel Shin and Do Kwan from leaving the country amid an investigation into the UST crash. What would regulation mean for investors anyway? There is a mixed reaction regarding crypto regulation with some who are for it, arguing that it could mean stability for cryptocurrencies, which would result in better protection of investors' funds. While anti-regulation crypto enthusiasts argue that regulation poses a big threat to crypto's biggest feature, which is decentralization. Well, we can only wait and see how regulators are gonna act if at all, and how fast that will happen. So all in all, only time will tell if Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will weather the storm. But one thing for sure is that while Bitcoin has had its good moments, the ride has not been smooth. On the bright side though, Bitcoin has survived crashes before and whatever happens in the future, the underlying technology is here to stay and its applications will continue spanning more than just digital currencies. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. Will Bitcoin survive this crypto winter? Well, remember to like, subscribe and follow us in our socials for future alpha. See ya.